so much of our history gets wiped off the face of the earth when it doesn't uh, meet the, s the approved script because you looked all over. Th this book is written, your search for your father revolves around your, res uh, your uh, attempt to find out what the bonus march of 1932 meant to him and you went all over the country and there's no physical remainder left or they've vastly altered uh, and or there's very little in the, in the relevant archives like the Hoover archive or the FDR archive. So anyhow, a long-winded question. In other words, the relationship, the similarity between pers forgetting the, per uh, the personalia of one's own background and uh, the country forgetting its, uh, its uh, relevant history. Well, my father was very fascinated with this incident of which you speak, the book, the incident that forms the basis for the book, the Bonus March of 1932, which was an incident that happened in May, June, July of 1932 when about 20,000 veterans of World War I who had been promised what they called a bonus, but was actually adjusted compensation to compensate them for their service, marched on Washington, or they descended upon Washington. They marched sometimes, but they had a tent city along the Anacostia River. There were about 20,000 of them. And they stayed there for the better part of a couple months, uh, lobbying for this legislation. And when the legislation didn't pass, it was voted down, they stayed there and became something of a problem and an embarrassment for the Hoover administration who wound up calling in uh, the troops under General Douglas MacArthur. Eisenhower was involved, General Patton was involved. It was an ignominious incident in American history in which veterans of the World War I were essentially being smoked out by the current cavalry. Now, my father was fascinating by this incident for one reason or other. He said it was the most overlooked incident in American history. He kept on saying during various points of my life that someone should write a book about it. He wrote to the historian Barbara Tuckman saying that, he, do you think it's a good idea? And Barbara Tuckman wrote him back saying, yeah, you should write that book. Now, uh, when my brother wanted to write a history paper, my father said, write about the bonus march. When uh, we would talk about what he did at, after he would retire from medicine, he was a radiologist, he said he was going to write this book. Now, he never did. And after he died, I was both interested in capturing his story, trying to capture the fleeting nature of it, but also um, the story he wanted to write. And I wanted to view his life through the lens of the bonus march and see what had been forgotten that he thought should be remembered, at the same time seeing what I thought might be forgotten about his life and seeing what should be remembered yeah. about that. And, and if I understand correctly, Adam, you thought that if you could solve the key uh, of what attracted him to the idea of writing about the bonus march, why he thought it was such an essential part, but overlooked part of history, you would also unlock a key to your father's personality. Right, a key though. Yeah. I mean, the idea of solving anyone's history through anything or defining yeah. a person through any sort of incident is kind of a foolhardy mission and one can never yeah. truly solve it. It's, I was inspired partially by my mother's favorite movie, Citizen Kane, in which um, you, know, you spend your life trying to find Rosebud and then you find out it's a sled. Now that gives you some insight into the character of Charles Foster Kane, but doesn't yeah. really tell you that much yeah. overall. Ditto for the bonus march with my father. It led me into a lot of paths and allowed me to talk, find a way into talking to a lot of people about who knew him and knew about the history, but I feel like I know him a little bit better, but still he's very much a puzzle. Yeah. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.